Welcome to church today. Glad that you are here. It is a good day to come and be in God's presence and to be in His house. And um, we're worshiping together and in the fellowship of uh, other believers as well as in the fellowship with Christ Himself, the fellowship of the Spirit. There's, there's no rock, there's no God like our God. No other name worthy of all.
clouds were on sun. Disaster comes, oh my soul, oh my soul. never let go since the beginning of time we've never let go of our <clears throat> of our forefathers we were always seeking always calling always going after those who had strayed those who were wandering those who from time to time really wanted nothing to do with you but you kept calling and you kept coming and finally you came yourself in the person of Jesus Christ and through his blood shed on the cross we are reconciled to you we are reconciled to one another we are reconciled to the eternal destiny and the eternal desires that you have placed within our heart and we thank you dear God 
Thank you for the opportunity that we have to come together to worship, to honor you today. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a day, for setting aside a day in which we put other things down, put other things aside, and say, today is the Lord's day. Today is the day that I give to him. And we thank you, Lord, today that it is not just one day that you are with us, but you are with us constantly through the work and ministry of your Holy Spirit. You speak to us. You speak to us through your word. You speak to us through our conscience and directly from your spirit to our spirit. And we thank you for that. Lord, we come on behalf of you uh, today of, of all those that need your touch upon their lives. We pray for the sick today. We pray, Lord, for those in our congregation that are, that are shut in and that are not, not able to be out and about and here and worship and fellowshipping with the body of Christ. Lord, we pray for those that have had uh, emergencies or perhaps crises this week. Lord, we thank you for the way that you have brought us through and for, what, for the way that you help us and lead us and guide us. Today, we come on behalf of those that, that are wandering somewhere out there, far away from God. Lord, we pray that you just bring them back to yourself today. Pray for those that are encountering physical and financial and uh, various kinds of, of, of storms and difficulties. And it seems like the floodwaters are rising above what they can bear and what they can stand in their lives. Lord, thank you for being our rescuer and our helper and our strength. Father, we come on behalf of your world today. Think of the we, we think of the uh, the unrest that is going on in the nation of Egypt and Tunisia and other places throughout this world. And Father, we pray for those people today. We do not know. We are not really in many ways intelligent or knowledgeable enough to know what to what to think or what to do. Not that we would have much effect on it, except we come to you and say, "Oh God, this is your world. These are your people." We seek your sovereignty and your providence to be at work today in your world among those people. Lord, today we pray for those that, that are beaten down. Lord, I pray this morning for spouses and children that have been abused in the last 24 hours. Sometimes it seems overwhelming and we are frozen into inaction. God, lead us as your church, as your people. To who, to those to whom we can benefit and bless and help in these things. Lord, we pray for our, uh, our upward ministry as it begins in full this next Saturday. Lord, thank you for those that are going to come forward uh, to help in those places where we need help. Thank you for speaking to them, perhaps even this moment, saying, wouldn't you like to help and be a part of this? Thank you, Lord, for the children, and thank you for the parents and, and aunts and uncles and grandparents. They're going to they're be there cheering on their, their, their children and, and watching and, 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 and just being a part of it. Lord, we pray that you'd help us to show the love of Jesus and declare the gospel freely and clearly in the process. Lord, we thank you today for your, for your help. We thank you for giving us every day our daily bread. So, Father, we want to turn back some of that to you this morning in the form of tithes and offerings. And we just pray, O oh God, today that as we give unto you, that you would accept and receive them because we give them in love and in thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. My name is Jarrett, and I am one. My name is Ingrid, and I am one. My name is Oni, and I am one. The old is gone, the new has come. For these, life has just begun. 
And God is saying, Behold, look at this. I make all things new. My name is Stella, and I am one. My name is Vic, and I am one. Millions of people have seen the Jesus film and have made a decision for Christ, and each has a name and a soul. Ako si Olive, kag-isaman ako. No, no, me, Adam ba? Sinulole, kayo ko, si Pai. They are being ransomed. They are being reclaimed. People and families who are broken are being made whole. My name is Eddie Morales, and I am one. They are being ransomed. They are being ransomed. They are being ransomed. They are sick and diseased, and Jesus is healing them, restoring them. My name is Mija, and I am one. My name is Sam Tamayo, and I am one. For he came to seek and to save those who are lost. Sitarangu, Dini Constantino Magai. Kusinat, Akosires, Ukaubani. He came to set the captives free. Akosimani, Isako. He came to give his life a ransom for many. He came to give us a hope and a future. The rescue is on. The message is out. Captives are finding freedom in Jesus the Christ. For the first time in their lives, they can see beyond the walls of this world. My name is Neil, and I am one. My name is Manny. And I am one. My name is Nestor, and I am one. Gentlemen, we be Chinese. So do you know me? My name is DJ, and I am one. My name is Stella, or me Eko. Thank you for loving those for whom Christ died. Thank you for reaching out to the least, to the last, and to the lost. My name is Brian, and I am one. My name is Kyungi, and I am one. If you could meet these people face to face, without a bit of hesitation in their voice, they would say, "I will see you in heaven, because you have shared Jesus with me. I am one, and my name is." and I am 18 years old and I live in Peru, South America. For a long time, my mother had known the truth of God, but my father did not accept her beliefs. In fact, he would not allow any of us to go to church. This caused a lot of strife in our house, and often they would fight over this difference in their lives. Slowly, his heart began to soften, and he would allow us to go to church. However, he still refused to accept God as Savior or attend a church with us. When word reached us that a team would be coming to our community and showing us the Jesus film, we knew how our father would respond if we asked him to go to the showing with us. We had been rejected plenty of other times, so we went to the Jesus film team members and asked if they would invite our father to the film showing. Much to our surprise and delight, he not only said yes, he actually went to watch the film on the giant screen in our community. Praise God! Since seeing that powerful film, we have all, even our father. Receive Christ in our lives and are proud members of the family of God. Now our home is strife-free, and we praise God for our hope in Him. The day I was born, my father was so drunk, he had a very difficult time getting my mother to the hospital on time. After I was born, he went back to the tavern and got as drunk as he could possibly get. When he sobered up, he realized that he had a problem. He would not call it alcoholism because he would never have admitted to that. But we knew he never took another drink after that day. But going into town was associated with going to the tavern, so we also did not go into town for church. A few years later, we moved to another community. There was only one place available to rent that we could afford. It was upstairs, over a tavern. He never took another drink. The miracle of the whole thing, beyond the fact that my father became a changed man, was the fact that two blocks around the corner was this little church. It was a very liberal church, but that first Sunday, my mother said, "We're going to church." 
So Mother and I walked down to that church. Some of you older people will relate. I wore a feed sack dress. It was the best thing I owned. Went to church, and Mrs. King took me into a little Sunday school room, and she said, Dora, Jesus loves you. Nobody had ever said words to me that I was loved. I sold out to Jesus right then. Became very involved in the church. It was a liberal church. It never told me that I had to ask God to forgive me of my sins. It never told me how to be a better person. But I hung in there. I went away to college, and the excuses began. I have to study. I have to work. I have, I have, I have. I used every excuse in the book. Don't give me your excuses. They were lies then, too. I got married. We went to church occasionally. We couldn't find one that really was meeting our needs. My husband had come up in a liberal church, too. Our children came along. Man, were they good excuses because I just couldn't get up in time to get two kids ready for church and everything. So I continued to stay home. One night there was a horrible accident in front of our house and this man in uniform came over and he helped me as we were administering first aid to, to the victims of the accident while we were waiting for the ambulance. Didn't really say much to me, but the next door there was a knock, next morning there was a knock at my door. There was Donna. One of the first things out of her mouth was, I go to the Church of the Nazarene, and I thought, oh, great. Here we go again. Somebody's going to start bugging me about going to church. We became very, very good friends. The two families did things together constantly, every week. Come go to church with us. Another excuse. I just kept coming up with them. And then one day they came over, and they said, we're having a Sunday school drive, and I really would like to take your girls to Sunday school to get points for me. I couldn't think of an excuse. And then I thought, oh, Sherry doesn't have shoes for church. The next day they came over with shoes for Sherry, and so they went to church. <clears throat> Still going. Larry and I, were a few Sundays later, were sitting in our chairs enjoying our Sunday morning without the girls because they were with Ron and Donna, and we didn't have a care in the world. When God spoke to us and said, what are you doing? You are sending your girls to church when you should be taking them. The following week, Ron and Donna came over and said, can I take the girls to church? And I said, no. That was the end of it. It was a very definite no. But the next Sunday morning, Larry and I got dressed and we took our girls and we went to the Nazarene church about a mile down the road. On the way home, Larry looked at me and said, do you think we can ever get involved in a group like the Nazarenes? And I go, <laughs> you know, kind of roll my eyes thinking, oh, I don't know about this. They're really conservative. But I praise God. We got involved the very next Sunday. We served that church for another six, seven years. And we just retired after 32 years in the ministry in the Church of the Nazarene. I tell you this to encourage you. Do not give up praying for those who are lost. Do not give up inviting them. God has a purpose. The Church of the Nazarene is a wonderful per place to bring your friends to meet Jesus. I'm one who believes in the Church of the Nazarene. Thank you, Dora, and, and thank you.